This tutorial walkthrough is for those who ever wanted to customize Blender more to their liking and optimize their workflow using add-ons. In this first of two videos, I will make a new panel, taking existing viewport render settings and placing them in a more convenient area, in this case the side panel in the 3D view. Let's get started. In the Preferences, under File Paths, you can find a script directory section which you can add a folder to. This allows you to put all your add-ons in one place and makes migrating your add-ons between Blender versions much easier. So I'm just going to start a new file. I am going to be copy and pasting code. I'm not just going to be typing from scratch. But you can see I added a GPL license at the top. Licensing is beyond the scope of these tutorials, but just know that for Blender add-ons, they need to be GPL compatible. The most important piece of code for Blender is the BL info dictionary. And that is what tells Blender not only the name of your add-on, but as well as other data, including the version, who made the add-on, and where people can expect to find other information about it. And with just those things, you can see that it already shows up in the add-on section. I don't even need to have any panels with it, but let's add the panel now. We will make a new class. The naming is a very specific convention. <laughs> I don't know why it is, but I believe the first few letters have to be all caps and then PT to signify a panel and the name of the panel and separate these with underscores. And the class needs to be inheriting from the bpy.types.panel class. From there you can define the label, the category name, and as well as where it shows up. That is the region type and the space type. In this case, since we want it in the 3D viewport, we will do view 3D and the region type will be UI, which is that right end panel. And we are using that register classes factory to register our classes. It just takes a list of all the classes you need to register. In this case, it's just the panels. You just need to put the panel's name in a list. In this case, it's a tuple. Now let's add some properties. One fun little tip you can use is you can right click on any property and click the copy full data path. And that'll give you the Python equivalent of that property and you can paste that into your script. You use the self.layout property to display properties. The first argument is always where to find said property. In this case, it's the scenes cycles settings. And then the second argument is the name of the final attribute, in which case it's preview adaptive threshold. Well, with the interface tab and the preferences, you can set developer extras to on. If you right click a property and click edit source, the Python code, Blender Python code, will be appended to your Blender file, which means you can get all the original UI code and literally copy and paste entire sets of properties. Now with the denoise section in the render settings, you'll notice that has a subpanel. This requires adding a second panel and then parenting it. To do this, we'll make a second class that's also a BPY types panel class. And the only thing you have to add is the parent ID attribute, and you just give it the name of your parent panel class. Now you'll notice that I forgot to add the space and region types. That's okay. I just paste them in from the other one. And you'll notice I got another error regarding a function, which is in the original code that does not exist in my code. So I had to copy and paste that just to make sure that my Python code can find the function. And since this code is no longer in the cycles package, I need to hard code that name in instead. As another exercise, let's add something for the preferences. The preferences are the properties that will be displayed with your add-on in the preferences. Let's add a category name, which just means the name of the tab that it's under. This is a nice feature to have, so that way users have the ability to organize where add-ons show up and under what tabs. So they can have it separate or they can have it grouped with other panels. So I'm going to the so on to the properties section of the Python API documentation, I copied all the default settings and only included the ones that really matter. In this case, it's the name and description and the default. The name will be the name of the label. The description is the tooltip. The default will just be viewport shortcuts, but the property field will allow that to be changed. Now 
Now the challenge becomes how to connect this property to the panels category property. So we'll go online and see other add-ons resolving the solution. It looks like Blender Flip Fluids has a helper category name in their preferences. So I will copy and then tinker from there. But before we do that, we need to check the license and make sure that it's okay for us to use this code in ours. Since it's GPL compatible, we are allowed to, and implicitly through this video, I am giving them credit. <laughs> so props to Flip Fluids. All right, so from here, we are calling a function in the update, which means that whenever this property is changed, call this update function. And the update function will edit the category property of the class and re-register the panel. Now I'm doing some troubleshooting where I accidentally copied package name, which doesn't exist in my code, so I have to make it the name of my file, which is viewport shortcuts. And it's still not working. Helper UI is not defined. Ah, another function which I have not defined. <laughs> okay, so this is supposed to be referencing the module that I'm accessing this panel from, in which case it's the same file. And so I try a few things that I see that it should be under the sys library. I can access the modules, in which case it's just itself. So I reference it with name. This is more Python concepts versus add-on related. And again, all the more reason to actually study Python and other coding concepts before really diving into add-ons. Oh, and I forgot to rename the category property. And now it works. You can see it grouped under the edit tab now. I don't know why I didn't use view for this example, because that makes a lot more sense, but that's okay. I hope you find this tutorial useful. There is the Scripting for Artists course that is officially taught by Blender that I would highly recommend. I wanted to share more of a walkthrough as well as some examples of troubleshooting, just so people could get comfortable with the process. Now we'll be making a part two, which is for multi-file add-ons and dives a little more into the coding and Python concepts aspects and custom operators and a few other things. But thank you and I'll see you next time.